Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm going to do an unboxing and initial review of my SDS Imports TSOS Zagana PX9 pistol. And this is actually going to be the second review I've done of this pistol. Now if you remember back, eh, probably last summer, I did one on my Zagana PX9. And this is the original one. And when I purchased this at that time, they had just started coming into the country. So I'm going to leave a link to this video down in the description. But I have a more updated model that I wanted to share with you guys. Real quick, the original one was a Philippine National Police contract with that crust right there, which I think is pretty cool because I collect Mill Serp and police pistols. Also, these take the SIG pattern magazines and the mag body would hold 18 rounds. But they had put a little crimp or dimple in these to hold 15 rounds. Now, since I've done this original video, a lot of you have come back in the comments and said that yours came with 18 round mags, different numbers of mags, different sights, all sorts of things. So let's get right into the unboxing initial review of this little bit newer generation. Before I do though, I bought this with my own money and from the generous help from all of you. So I really appreciate everyone that is a Patreon supporter. You can sign up down below to be a member of the channel and all of you that leave super chats in my live streams, you guys are the ones who sponsor the channel. Nobody sends me these free guns, which this is actually how I like it. So we can just give you an honest review and along with all of your generous help, we're buying these guns together, right? So right away we see it comes in a hard case, which is nice. Let's take a peek at the overall package here. So we're going to see a whole bunch of goodies and accessories, which is pretty cool. So if you want to pause it, take a look at that right there. All right, let's start getting all this stuff out of here because there's quite a bit of cool stuff that comes with this. By the way, these are a budget pistol and especially in today's day and age where everything seems overinflated, they're actually one of the better deals that I know of on the market. We're going to see right off the bat, it comes in its holster. And in the lid, we're going to see the paddle that will screw right on. Now, this holster is pretty cool. Basically, you would grip the handgun like you normally would. Your middle finger just kind of naturally pushes this lever up. And then the pistol draws. I really, really like this holster for OWB carry. This is pretty cool. You might want to look into something different if you're using IWB. But for OWB, actually, I think the holster is a pretty cool design. And I really like it. So this is imported by SDS Imports, made in Turkey by a company called TSAS, and, this, and the model is the Zagana PX9. Now you've probably heard of TSAS because of their awesome 1911s, and as you know, I've done several reviews on this channel of both their 45 and 9mm USGI models, so definitely check my other videos if you're interested in the TSAS 1911s that are also imported by SDS. So we have a polymer frame, 9mm striker fired handgun. Let's take a look at it and I'll give you guys my overall impressions of it. Right away, the gun has a nice feel. The polymer frame has horizontal lines in the front strap area of the grip, which are very comfortable. Keeps your hand from moving up and down. I always think horizontal is the best as far as a grip texture because the handgun under recoil does want to kick up and that helps, you know, really get a good grip. Same thing. We're going to see horizontal serrations in the rear of the grip. This comes with a back strap installed. It comes with three different sizes. So let's take a look at those right now. Comes with a separate baggie here. By the way, it's really nice. The foam compartments in this case that I just showed you earlier, everything stays put. You know, it's actually a really nice case that kind of comes included with the handgun. So I'm seeing a size number three here. So this is going to be your largest backstrap. This next one is labeled size number two. So that's going to be your medium, I assume. Which must mean that size number one, or the smallest one, is installed on the handgun. Now it also comes with this little handheld punch tool, which is really nice. They included that. And you're going to see a roll pen that you're just going to press out with this included punch. And your back straps are just going to come on and off and get pinned back in place using this little included free tool. So that's pretty cool. The sides, not really much texture, which is perfectly fine with me because I get most of the grip on my pistol from the rear and the front. I use a thumbs forward grip. 
and I'm finding that this pistol just right away nice and comfortable feels just like my other one which is which is a good thing now when you first see this handgun you're thinking right away it kind of looks like another type of pistol that's been very popular in the US and although this is definitely not a clone there's many many parts that are different certainly this is you know definitely modeled after and certainly some of the main components of it are kind of copied or modeled after the original HS2000 Croatian pistol which would later be imported and sold as the Springfield XD so that roll pin through the top is kind of a telltale sign very XD ish there as well as the takedown lever with the little scallop in the slide. Yeah. Clearly this was modeled, inspired after, whatever. But it's not a clone. And there's a lot of things that are totally different. Just forget to let you guys that know right off the let you guys know that right off the bat. So yeah. Alright, so we're gonna remove the magazine, which this is one of the big differences between this and the previous model that I got. Because already in the last year, they have about three different versions of this. Right now, today, you'll see a Gen 2 being sold. I think the one with the Philippine National Police logo that I did the previous video on would be a Gen 1. I'm going to call this a Gen 1.5, and I'm kind of making up that name because there's clearly a couple differences, mainly being a little bit different sights, different magazines, well, different magazine capacity, as well as the lack of the insignia. So whereas on the original imports where they had the 15 round mag, it was kind of a bummer. And I kind of complained about it in the first video. I'm like, man, this body should take 18 rounds. And if you're going to have the long grip frame, why do you want a 15 round mag? Probably had something to do with the police contract they had in the Philippines where they were limiting them to 15 rounds. And that's what shipped with those. So it was what it was. Still like the pistol, but yeah. Now this is a cool improvement on this model. This comes with the full capacity, 18 rounds. There is no crimp or dimple in here, so we're going to get our full capacity. And yes, these do take SIG P226 pattern mags, which are becoming very prevalent and are used in a lot of other handguns, like this pattern. And we'll do another video to check to make sure. But these exact mags that come with this PX9 should fit in your Taurus G2C, G3, G3C etc maybe even some of the canics don't quote me on that yet i've not tried it but yeah so the one mag comes in the handgun so we've got one there in the upper part of the case here we have a second 18 round mag so this is nice i'm looking to see we see mgp226-9 and yes i was already going to guess these were metgars these are metgar mags made in italy i've done videos with the 226 metgar mags before so check out my Taurus playlist if you're interested in the Taurus pistols. And these are a very high quality magazine and they're actually the OEM maker for many companies. So that's a cool, that's a good thing that it has Metgar mags. We're going to see a third mag in the foam cutout right next to the handgun that comes with a speed loader on top. So we have a polymer type speed loader that's included with it. So, hey. So three 18 round mags, that's already a big plus. I really like that a lot. I couldn't stand those 15 round crimped mags. Let's see what else it comes with. Then we'll go over the gun itself. It comes with a little cleaning rod with a slot. It's plastic, it's cheap, but whatever. If you don't own one, you could get by with this for a while to run your patches through. Comes with a metal nylon bristle. Nylon, maybe it's natural hair bristle actually, but it comes with a cheap bristle brush for swabbing out the bore there. The case comes with a little flag. These are needed at some ranges, so I'd bring that with you to the range. You never know. Some of them on ceasefire like to see that orange sticking out, so that's pretty cool. It's also going to come in the top. Let me peel back this foam here. A user's man manual, so there we go. The manual appears to just be red and black basic instructions i won't bore you to death with the manual but just a quick glance at it it looks pretty good tells you it comes with a complete parts list this is pretty cool from what i understand sds imports does have most of these parts available takedown cleaning all the important stuff and all the safety if you're new to handguns or new to this type of pistol so definitely always read your manual especially if you're new to guns there's lots of information in there starts off with the rules of gun safety there's nothing more important than that. Also shows you how to disassemble clean. Look, I know you guys don't like to read the manual when you buy your new 
Blu-ray player, computer, whatever. But for handguns, especially if it's your first one, read the manual. There's tons of good information. And for those of you that don't want to read it, well, then just continue to watch my video. I'll try to help you guys as much as I can. All right. So we have a striker fired, 9mm, 18 round capacity, flush fit mag, takes SIG 226 mags. I've already said the ergonomics of the polymer frame feel great in my hands, so that's cool. We have a slightly undercut trigger guard, so that really gives me room to get my middle finger kind of up and underneath the trigger guard to grip as high as I can to control the handgun easier. We'll notice there's definitely an adequate beaver tail area on the back where I don't feel there's any risk whatsoever of me getting any kind of slide bite from my hand. So that's all good. The trigger guard's rather large. I have no problem getting a finger in there. So, so far, so good. It is squared off with serrations on the front. Some of you do choose to shoot your handgun like this. And if you do, you'll like that feature. I shoot with more of a thumbs forward with my forefinger back here to provide more support. That's how I shoot. But you can put your finger there if that's your thing. I could care less. We see a mill standard 1913 Picatinny type rail on the front. This should take all the standard Picatinny attachments and we see three slots. So rather generous area. You should fit many types of lights and lasers on this with probably the Streamlight TLR1-HL being one of my favorites. So I'll leave a link to that down in the description for my Amazon store, which does help the channel. If you're ever buying anything on Amazon, great light I'd recommend for this. All right, so it does hold the slide open on an empty mag. Let's get this mag out of here. Right away, the slide feels very smooth. The machining feels good. There's no hitches. And I'll tell you, I'm noticing this has a very robust, high-powered recoil spring in here. Like, it takes substantially more effort to rack this handgun back. I did another video on how to rack a handgun if you have weak hand strength. So definitely go check my channel for that. But, wow, quite the robust recoil spring. I'm going to suspect these are really going to like NATO ammo, which is basically kind of like a plus P. So, so far, it seems very heavy duty. Everything feels solid. No rattling around on the handgun. Nice. It has a modified browning type action where the barrel tilts up, if you will, as it comes out of battery and lowers back down as the handgun goes forward and into battery. Pretty standard fare there on most modern handguns. We can see there's rear cocking serrations as well as pretty generous front so if you want to do the press checks or whatever you're into doing there that's cool i also see it features a loaded chamber indicator which we'll check out in just a little while when we rack the pistol it does have a striker indicator in the rear which is pretty cool so there's a red dot that becomes visible as well as it slightly protrudes proud of the rear of the frame so you can actually feel it noticeably with your finger so that's nice. Even in the dark, you could kind of just take your thumb up there and know that, yes, this gun is hot. If you pull the trigger, the striker will fall. You could also just slightly move your finger up here. Feel if that's protruding out. So in complete pitch black, you can tell if this handgun has a round chambered. Also, if the striker is cocked and ready to fire. So that's pretty cool, too. We can see on the left side. It has a slide catch that's kind of in the typical space you'd normally see it. Let me try that again and see how comfortable it is to use. All right. It's all right. It's kind of standard fare. Pressing it down. We'll put the handgun in battery. Let's see how stiff it is to do this with a mag in. So if it holds open on the last round, some handguns are very hard to do this with, namely the Tauruses. They have very powerful springs if you're using the OEM 12 round, you know, mags like on your g2c g3c let's check this one out not too bad probably because it has an 18 round mag there's plenty of room for that spring to compress so a lot of you guys like to know that that feels good all right let's get this mag back out of here the striker has been cocked we're going to see this has an ambidextrous frame mounted low profile safety so there's the safety there we're going to lift this up very stiff very stiff out of the box Try that again. It's a lot easier to do this when you're not trying to show someone on camera, guys. Yeah, very stiff. Not a bad thing because you don't want to accidentally ever engage a safety. But let's make sure it brushes off nice and easy. And it does. 
So this is actually something you'll see quite a bit. It's a little hard for me to just hit that with my thumb. I have to really get in there and use quite a bit of effort to push it up. That's okay with me. Typically on striker fire guns like this, you'll see more of a trigger blade safety, which we'll get to this trigger in just a second. But in lieu of that, we have the frame mounted safety. You always want it to be much harder to put it on than to take it off. Now for you lefties or people that like to manipulate your guns in different ways, we'll see there is a right side. Same thing. So this is completely ambi. And these two are connected. They just go up and down together. If you flip down the the right side, for example, you'll see the left goes down, back up. So there you go. When it's in safe, the trigger just stops. So we have a some type of trigger blocking device internally in here with the manual safety. We'll also see that the slide is locked. It's not going to move back to the rear. So there you go. Take the safety off. Now the firearm is fully functional. The slide looks pretty cool. It has kind of a neat little milled styling in here. Kind of a little ramp roller coaster look to it. It looks cool. I mean, it's kind of a squared off blocky design. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I don't think it looks ugly. Let me know what you guys think. We can see Zagana PX9 T-Sauce Turkey. According to SDS Imports, this does have a Cerakote finish. I guess that means it's Cerakote name brand or something of the equivalent. The finish appears to be well done. It has kind of a matte finish, not overly glossy. The machining feels perfectly smooth. It has nice rounded corners on the slide. We're going to take a look here, guys, at the front portion. You can see it has a rather large recoil lug underneath the barrel and the front of the slide where the barrel interface is there. You're going to see this has a blade front sight. This one has serrations just for the help with anti-glare. The same thing as the rear sight. So this is a completely blacked out front sight, completely blacked out rear sight with anti-glare type serrations. So we can see there's a single notch in the back, a single blade in the front. And let me take a peek here. The sight picture is actually rather easy to pick up. It's a very large, tall, broad front sight. Now, this is why I call this like a Gen 1 and a half because my very first one, I'll bring that out real quick here, this had a front night sight on it, if you guys remember the old video, and a fixed rear sight that is pressed into a dovetail. Now, you can adjust these for windage by drifting it back and forth within the dovetail, okay? So, drift adjustable, if you will. Now, there's a Gen 2 that they're advertising. I don't have one of those yet, guys. And they're advertising that it has rear and front night sights. Now, this one, I don't know, can we call it a Gen 1.5? I don't know. It's a little different. Unlike the other one that has a fixed rear sight and a front night sight, you can see the night sights gone on the front, no night sights in the rear. However, it does have an adjustable for windage rear sight. Let me take a look at that. You're going to see there's a little set, like a screw here, an adjustment screw that's spring loaded. Can you guys see this? See how I'm moving that a little bit? So you're basically just going to take a really small little flathead there. And if you turn it to the right, you'll see the slide drifting over to the left. If I turn it to the left, it's going to come right back. So, yeah, this is with the just the little tip of a little small flathead windage adjustable. So we have the adjustable rear sight, which is pretty cool. Let me see if these, with the finish, it's kind of deceiving. Let's see if these will attract the magnet. Yes, the front sight is metal. It's steel. The rear sight is also steel on the back portion and the main body of it. So we have steel sights. That's always a good thing. We have a rather high ledge that some of you may like because you could probably rock this off the edge of a counter or your belt pretty easy. So yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, now this features a four inch chrome lined cold hammer forged barrel. Now there's a little bit of discrepancy with this barrel out there guys. Depending on what site you buy it from, or actually when you went to SDS Imports website, whether it's when they came out with this first gen or this, we'll call it Gen 1.5 or the new Gen 2, they've been known to list this barrel at 4 inches, 4.13 inches, even 4.5 inches on some very prominent sites. So what is it really? Well, this is a 4 inch barrel or it might be so insignificantly over 4 inches. 
I think it's fair just to round it to four. And here's how I got to the bottom of it. Now this is a custom tool, guys. You can get these at Taco Bell. So I basically just took this drinking straw, put it in the barrel, took a Sharpie and marked it right there, okay? And came up that, let's see if we can pick this up on tape for you guys, just because if you're curious, I'm serious, there's a lot of discrepancies online, like how long is the barrel on this thing because you'll find from quite reputable sites that normally would know what they're talking about many different barrel lengths for this so we can see let's put it right here we are basically right at four inches guys let me get that lined up there it shows that it's like four and a sixteenth this is hard to do on camera it shows right around four and a sixteenth but that's probably just because the way I marked my barrel I didn't want to mark the actual crown so it measures right at four inches guys and if it's any more than that it's very insignificant so all i can say is this the places that say these have four and a half inch barrels it's just a typo the places that say they have like 4.03 or whatever inch barrel that's probably what it technically is of course with it being made in turkey it's originally measured in millimeters so sorry to bore you guys with that but that has been kind of a point of contention with these how long is the barrel right Wow, what a robust spring on this thing. All right, let's check the trigger. So right now we can see that the striker is cocked. It's ready to be released. The safety is down. I'm just going to pull it normal, give you guys my impressions, then I'll try to show you a close-up. All right, reset. Okay. You know what? It's not bad. Right off the bat, okay? This is first impressions. It's not the best trigger, maybe, but I think it's going to be all right. And keep in mind, whenever people are talking about how good's the trigger when they're doing a tabletop review, look, you can really sit there and analyze and go real slow in a nice, calm, quiet environment. But all of you that actually shoot, you know what I'm talking about. When you're out on the range and you're just pulling the trigger, as long as there's no hitches or glitches in it, and as long as the pounds aren't too heavy... As long as the trigger shoe isn't wearing out the pad of your finger because it's uncomfortable, a good trigger on the range can be totally different. So we're not trigger snobs here. At least I'm not one. If you are, let me know in the comments. But hey, when it comes to duty type pistols, budget pistols like this, I'm not going to sit there and totally nitpick the trigger. I don't think it's quite a G3C trigger though, which I love. I think that has one of the best budget triggers there is, but it's actually comfortable. So by them putting the safety on the frame, okay, you have to have safeties on these guns for them to be able to be imported. They're able to get rid of the blades. So this has a very comfortable, very wide one piece shoe, which is nice and chamfered and beveled on the edges. So I can already tell, you know, range shooting, especially extended shooting, not that any of us can afford to do any extended shooting right now, but just humor me, guys. One day, one day 9mm will get back down enough where we can do extended range sessions again. Let's have some faith here. This trigger is going to be very comfortable. I'm telling you what. I don't mind the blade safety trigger, but it sure is nice when you can have one piece. And this trigger feels like it's metal to me. Let's get out my little magnet here. Yes, it is. Fully attracts a magnet, guys. So we have a metal one-piece trigger shoe. All right, let's cock it here. So we're going to notice a little bit of take up, about halfway back. Pretty abrupt snap. It cocked really quickly. So I'm going to hit the wall. Not really any over travel, guys. Not bad. A little spongy. It's not the most abrupt sharp break. The striker kind of has more of a clunk forward rather than a snap. That's the best way I can describe it, by feeling it and hearing it. Let me get it down by the mic for you. More of a little bit of a thud. It's okay, though. All right, we're going to pull the trigger here. Take a look at reset. You can barely hear it, but I could slightly feel it. And there's our reset. So a rather short reset, but it doesn't really push your finger much. You can't hardly feel it. Right there. There's reset. 
and there's full tr trigger travel. So we'll go back up against that wall off of reset, and we're right there. When I'm shooting, I don't really notice it that much, guys. But when I'm sitting there, you know, doing a tabletop review like this, you notice all the little things. I've definitely had pistols with a much crisper, louder, more abrupt reset than this. The reset's very subtle. I don't even know if my microphone's going to pick that up. I have a nice blue microphone here. Hopefully it does. And there we go. But yeah, just be messing around with it for a minute here. The trigger shoe feels very nice. I think I could definitely get used to this trigger. The trigger on my other one is real similar. No two, no two triggers are exactly alike, but my original one might feel a little more crisp. But I have actually shot the one with the Philippine National Police logo. This is the original one that I did a review on. I thought I lost all my footage, guys. I finally found it. So you're actually going to see a range review of this that I took last fall. So stay tuned to the channel if you want to see a shooting review of my PX9. I'll show them both side by side. This is the first one I got with the non-adjustable sights, with the front night sight, with the Philippine police logo on it. Here's the second one that I'm just unboxed today. They're basically the same gun, just slightly different sights, the lack of the logo. And the kicker though with this new model, 18 round mags that you get the full use of the mag body. No dimple there. Mechgar mags are good to go too. So. That's definitely pretty cool, guys. All right, this is not real. You can see this is inert. There's rubber there. All right, let's take a look and check this out. Let's see how it feeds. This is 115 grain ball type projectile. Loaded with no problem. You know, they say this is a loaded chamber indicator. I'm not noticing a huge difference. I mean, if you're really looking at it, maybe. But it doesn't like abruptly pop out. This is actually your extractor. Now, on some pistols, the extractor just protrudes a little bit, which is what I'm going to call this. Other ones, they protrude abruptly, and they couple as an extractor slash loaded chamber indicator. To me, I'm just going to call this an extractor because I'm definitely not seeing it sticking out really any more than the other one. I mean, it's so subtle. So we'll do a follow-up on this if you guys are curious. I have read, though. There's not a lot of info on these, believe it or not, especially when you go to like five different places, websites, and they all give you different specs for these. And they've been around for less than a year, but they already have a Gen 1, which I've showed you here, and then a so-called Gen 2 that they've just started shipping. And then I'm going to call mine a Gen 1.5 because it has features that are different than both the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. So, but I have read that these have a loaded chamber indicator on the side. I don't know. Not in my opinion. It only sticks out like, see that teeny, teeny bit? Look at that. That picked it up right there. Here's the one that does not have a round chamber. This is the original one. I mean, okay, right there. It's totally flush <laughs> with the round. It sticks out like one sixty-fourth of an inch or less. I mean, like, Okay, you guys make up your mind whether you consider this to have a loaded chamber indicator or not. But you know what? I always treat guns as though they're loaded for safety anyways. So I'm going to be okay. And if I was to be carrying this for personal protection, I would make sure I had a round in the chamber no matter what. And with this having the manual safety and the included holster, I'd be okay with carrying it just like this, guys. So... There's a look at it with the holster. Pretty cool. I really like that release. The draw feels nice. It's just natural. Like you go to grasp the gun, right? You have to bring your middle finger up and it automatically depresses this little release lever. The lever comes back down, locks it in place. So this is a type of retention holster there for OWB. All right, you're going to see a shooting video coming up soon. Like I said, it's a little older footage of the first one. But you know what? As far as the mechanics of these, they're the same pistol. We just get a little bit upgraded rear sight on this. Without the night sight, you're lacking the police logo. But we do get the full 18 rounds. And that's the gist of what I can tell the difference would be. Eh, I might have forgot something on this video, guys. We'll do a follow-up for sure. 
And let's get this round chucked out of here. Make sure it extracts it, okay? I just thought of one more thing I want to show you guys. So we're going to abruptly to the rear. Yeah, extraction was great. Ejection all the way across the room. Hit the wall four feet away. I'm going to be crawling around under my desk to get that later. So don't say I don't do anything for you guys in these videos. It's a tough job having to crawl around and find stuff on the ground. <laughs> I'm messing with you. Let's check the mag release. I almost forgot to show that to you. It's on the left hand side. It is metal. So that's cool. All the control sights and everything on this polymer frame pistol are metal. I reach over here with the thumb. Yeah, it seems to be totally drop free. So let me show you this angle. Yeah, these mags are expensive. I don't want to drop them. It's kind of cool because if you look at the price of an 18 round Metgar 226 mag and the fact that my package I got three it actually takes off a good chunk of what I paid for the the handgun which is pretty cool yeah quite the spring in there it actually pops up even when it's upside down not that that really matters I'm just showing you yeah that's nice now they sell these at different places here's where I got mine right here there's been different SKUs of these. Like I said, it does get confusing. There's the Philippine Police one. There's the so-called Gen 2 that's available on one of the popular sites. There's mine. It wasn't labeled as a Gen 2 or Gen 1, but eh. 2A EDU channel labels it the Gen 1.5. You guys can all pile on me in the comments. Dude, it's not a 1.5. All right, well, it's not a Gen 1 and it's not a Gen 2. Now, these are really cool. And you know what I like about them? They're budget price. It gives a lot of new shooters or just people on a budget in general, which a lot of us are on a budget right now, me included. It gives us a way to get into a cheaper handgun that's built on a reliable, tried and true design by the TSOS factory, which, hey, it's Turkish. You guys can decide whether you like that or not. That's a personal choice. But in my opinion, they make very good firearms. I own several now that were in the budget category and... They've done well for me. I'll try to leave some links down in the description to some of the videos I talked about. But just search my channel and you'll definitely see some more TSOS firearms. Including an unboxing of my first version of this. First shots range video that's coming very soon. Look, I appreciate all you guys' help. The links are down there if you guys want to support. But definitely just by hitting the thumbs up really helps. Leave a comment and share this channel with your friends. And I really appreciate it. So hopefully this helps some of you. I've had lots of requests to talk about this again. Let me know what you guys think. SDS Imports. TSOS. Zagana. PX9. Alright. Thanks for watching. And have a good one.